like triggers? What's happening? So I thought we played our last midweek game, but here we are. It's here. It's now. It's game day. We're home for this one. We're off to the hive. It's Barnet v Port Vale. Now this game was due to be played on the Saturday, but was postponed due to the beast from the east meeting Storm Emma. They seem to get on very well with each other. I mean, there was a lot of white stuff all over the floor, so I think they had a good time. Unless Emma doesn't like a good cleanup job. Spitters are quitters. Anyway, that's enough of chatting bollocks. Let's get into football news. So Port Vale currently sit 22nd and their last five games have been three draws and two losses. Drawing their last game in a 1-1 against Grimsby Town. Now Port Vale have won in 10 games. And the last win came back on the 30th of December 2017 in a 4-0 win over Luton. Low, 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 low. And Port Vale's last away win was back on the 16th of December, a 2-1 against Carlisle. Now, I don't even need to explain to you how massive this game is for theoretically both sides. Obviously, we need the points more. We've got to try and do something. Our last two games, Colchester and Coventry, both of them teams wasn't great. We picked up a win in one. We lost the other one. I don't know what team's going to turn up today regarding Barnet or Port Vale, but either way, we've got to do our job. We've got to put that ball in the back of the net and make sure we walk away with all three points. It's a must win today. No excuses. Neil Aspin is still the man in charge of the Valiants, and his record now stands at 29 games in charge, 10 wins, 8 draws, and 11 losses. And that gives him a win percentage of 34.5. It was 60 2.5 last time we met, but he had only had eight games, so I guess his true record's now coming out. Now, Port Vale's danger men are number 10, David Worrell, who has four goals and leads away with most assists, with six in 31 games. Number 11, Christian Montano, who has four goals, one assist in 23 games. Now, the last meeting between us two was back in November of this season. Port Vale picking up a 1 0 win with a penalty with about 10 minutes to go. Still, arguably, a very soft penalty, but either way, it was given and we lost the game. But the last time we played Port Vale at home and won was back in 2011. And that, funny enough, was a penalty as well. A 1-0 win for Barnet with Ismail McLeod getting the only goal. And that is our only home win against them to date. So, let's get to the grand. Let's get some team news in. Let's get three points. And then let's get the fuck out of town. Don't worry about what's on my head. I'm ill. I can't be bothered to gel my hair. And I actually didn't have anything else to say here. So, fuck you, Port Vale. Come on, Barnet! The team's in and there's been one change. Shomerton has been brought into the starting lineup. Shaq's been dropped to the bench. It's a bold move knowing that Shomerton has hardly played any football for the first team this season. <laughs> Still 1-0 Barnet. Not much has happened for both scenes, but we've let them get back into the game a bit. A couple of corners from them, that's not led to nothing, but we need to make sure we get this second goal. 20 minutes in, it's still 1-0 Barnet, but it is so slow out there for both teams. It seems like Port Vale has slowed the game right down. They're taking goal kicks from the other side. They're slowing everything down. I'm thinking you're 1-0 down, why are you slowing it down? But I guess that's the game plan. Slow it down, hit us when we've switched off. Half hour in, still 1-0. It's not been a lot from both teams. Port Vale have done next to nothing. Think, but we need that second goal. There's hardly anything on for us. Santos just had a great 25, 30 yard run. He should have had a shot himself. He's trying to play John Kinney in. Too close to the keeper. He's picked it up. We need that second goal. 32 minutes in. Paul Fowles just had that first shot. Great save by Lee. Five to the half. Still 1 0 Barnet. Paul Fowles come alive in the last 5 10, but they've not really troubled us a great deal. Right, so it's half time and it's Barnet 1. It's Paul Fowles 0. It's not enough at times. Paul Fowles have cut us open and caught us short at the back. Post. Be it a set piece, be it a through ball, they are catching us out and we are not picking them up. It's too easy for them to find players. We've changed formation about 47 times in this first half. 45 minutes now could define both of our seasons, so they've got to go for it and we can't just sit back now. Come on, Barnett. Five minutes into the second half, Barnet won, Port Vale won. Corner, came through, legs slipped through his hands. Guy's got a free header. As he's edited it, he's edited it through Valletti's legs. 1-1. One, one. Almost 60 minutes in, it's still 1-1. One, one. But we've had our first shot. Just went wide. 
Curtis Weston with about 25 yards. First thing we've done in the second half though. 65 minutes in, it's still 1-1, and we have now entered panic mode. Can't put two passes together, just trying to toe punt it, clear it anywhere we can. There's no communications there, and this is what costs us, baby. Don't have any composure. Literally before that, Shaman had a great run down his right hand side, got a nice goal in. But bother to get on the end of it. We've got to go for a win. Draws are no good. Into the last 20 now, it's still 1 1. 20 minutes to define our footballing status. No changes yet to be made. Leaving them too late once again. Ten minutes to go, it's still 1 1. We've taken off John Akinde. Fair enough, he's not in form. You keep the big man on to win you some aerial battles. And now, all of a sudden, Akbar Akbar has been standing on the sideline for five minutes to come up. Why are we taking so long to make subs? And why do we keep doing long balls when we've got no fucking geezer up there to fucking hold the ball up? Agent Wesley is striking once again. Stevenage through and through into the last five. Still 1-1. One, one. Duncan said, I can't remember having a shot in this second half. Port Vale's been pretty much all over us the last ten. If it's going to be a winner, it's going to be them. So in the game, that was a massive six-pointer. The game finished. Barnet won. Port Vale won. We scored after four minutes and then done nothing after that. It's another game dropping points against a team who are technically fighting for their life as well. So they were up for it. The games against Coventry and Colchester, they were both piss poor. Port Vale outplayed both of them. And to be honest with you, if there's going to be a winner, it was going to be Port Vale. They was cutting us open at the best of times. We just wasn't good enough. Again, all it was was backwards passing, sideways passing. Passing. We was going nowhere. Hardly any creativity. I don't know what Jack's done to be completely dropped. I just don't understand these tactical decisions regarding subs as well. We're leaving them too long. And when they are being made, they're the wrong ones. Now, I know John O'Kinney's not on form, but you leave the big man on. He's an aerial threat. He will bully players. You taking him off, we had nothing up front. And all we kept doing it was lumping it up front. The team we are chasing is Port Vale. They're the team that we want to drag into this relegation battle with us. Yes, they're only one place above it. But we want to leap frog them to drag them into it so it was a must win game and they are fighting for their life the subs were an absolute joke an absolute joke we've got nine games to go home to Wickham is our next one but right now agent wesley strikes again you know what to do see you later